Hello to my Capricorns. This is Queen Amora coming to you with your Pluto retrograde video, getting you prepared. If you or if you're on Patreon, you would see that the dates are May second to dot dot dot. I think it's going to be retrograde for uh, like 158 days this year. So the plan was initially to, since for people who are not on um, Patreon, who don't follow me on Patreon, to put up something on YouTube, you know, to help people to um, get themselves mentally prepared for Pluto. Because Pluto is such a powerful planet. It's literally the, um, the, the planet of, um, when you think about elimination, like think about death, rebirth planet of regenerative forces, destruction, annihilation, like complete transformation. But because it's a generational planet, you want to make sure when you're breaking generational cycles, chains, and curses, that's why I'm trying to put the video up long in advance before we get to May 2nd, because, and I may have mentioned March 2nd, because that was the original date that was going to go up, but just not to create any confusion, let's, I'm going to put the video up now so you all can um, get yourselves prepared. So, But those of you all who are already on Patreon, already got the dates for the planets that are going retrograde and, you know, dot, 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 that kind of stuff, right? So anyway, we're going to get into this and um, trying to make it available for everybody. So um, let's get into this so we can see exactly which generational cycles, chains, and curses you're breaking, Capricorn. So you can get what you can, so you don't have to feel like you're under pressure by the time uh, Merc I mean, excuse me, uh, Pluto goes retrograde. It's going to, it's going to go retrograde in Aquarius, right? We know retrograde doesn't mean that a planet moves backwards and it don't doesn't move slowly. As a matter of fact, I'm going to attach a Pluto explaining Pluto retrograde from my other channel. I'm going to I'm going to drop that video link in the description. So in case you haven't watched it or you don't know about the other channel, you will now have the link directly to the other channel, the knowledge channel. So trying to provide you with as much information as possible so that you can get in front of all of this. This is still the year of wealth and Pluto is going to be retrograde for a large percentage of 2024. So when you talk about breaking cycles, chains and curses, it's best to know in advance what's coming down the pike so you can start mentally preparing yourself for it so you don't feel like, oh my God, I got to be, you know, like a robot. I got to wait until May 2nd before, oh, now I got to, I got to hurry up and rush. And now I'm so overwhelmed. I feel like everything is, you know, out of alignment, right? So let's get into it. I've already prayed over your cards and, um, and I've already cleared the space. So let's see what generational cycles, chains and curses you're breaking and um and so in preparation for may 2nd 2024 right as a humanitarian first card out of the deck is ace of pentacles right somebody is um breaking the cycle right out the gate of recognizing that time is money here we have six of cups the king of wands we also have the three of cups Three and six obviously is nine. The the Empress card, right? We also have the Two of Cups, right? So time is money. Someone is very creative. And so someone is now investing more time in your creativity, your sensuality, your so, your sexuality, the things that actually bring you joy. Something that could have thrown this out of alignment, thrown your sacral chakra out of alignment would have been a loved one died when you were younger and everybody was so busy grieving. Nobody tended to you grieving yourself, right? Pouring into you. Um, I, it could have also been somebody moved around a lot. Remember, you know, stability is very important to earth signs, right? So like where you live, a lot of you all have the same friends you grew up with. Anything that keeps you connected to the earth you know, maybe you all have felt like, okay, I need to stay connected to family members, you know, that are unhealthy and toxic, right? Because they're just because they're family. So I definitely see somebody saying, I'm going to start putting more time into me. This is the cycle that you're breaking, right? I don't have to keep pouring so much into everybody that I just neglect myself. So I see like that is a, the, the cycle that you're breaking as the humanitarian, because it's going to be an Aquarius. You can look all of this up if you want to, because it's going to be an Aquarius. You're the first human being that you're going to be the best humanitarian in, because you're saying, I'm trying to make myself a better human being for the rest of humanity and whoever source sends across my path 
So I see soulmate energy coming across your path and people who are pouring into you. So sources say you're learning possibly from, you know, mom and dad's side of the family, what that looks like when families manipulate people for the and for toxic reasons, right? Like um, and, and what that looks like when you cut off toxic energies, like, you know, the joy of pouring back into yourself and you looking at when your emotions are manipulated for the good or for the bad, like what that looks like for you as an example. So let's say, for instance, mom and dad got a divorce or let's say, you know, somebody's in the military and, they, and you know, they gone for years. They're still married, but they gone for years. Right. Maybe mom was deployed maybe dad was deployed everybody going you know both sexes going to the military right um and let's say for instance you know for you you saw that okay at first mom was sad or dad was sad but then they start hanging out with friends and start doing things like healthy you know things to nurture themselves so it doesn't take away from you they're pouring into you and that kind of stuff or let's say a loved one transition and people kind of rallied around you because they considered your feelings as a kid. Like, okay, they're grieving too. That person played a role in their lives as well. But it can also be on the other side. So somebody is learning how to do what works best for you. In the meantime, um, you have all of these great ideas, all of this creativity, and there are people who have been able to manipulate your emotions and put you in survival mode in the past you are now taking control of that, right? You're not pouring anything into people who are operating in, in, in survival mode, right? In other words, you're leaving the wilderness, the zoo, the circus, all of those things. And so somebody said, I'm not investing any more time into that. Um, I'm taking the blindfolds off. So here we have the two of swords. Remember, you're the first human being that you're investing time in. This is a trans. This is a um, this is a circulation of wealth. So you you are pouring into your creativity, the things that make you happy. You saying, "I'm going to invest in myself, be a better human being, so that I can know exactly what works for me and what doesn't work for me." If that makes any sense, right? So yeah, let's keep it moving forward, and then we're gonna um, we're not gonna make this video too long. We're not gonna make this video too long. So hopefully that makes sense because Pluto, like I said, that's the planet of annihilation. That's the planet of rebirth, death, the planet of regenerative forces of of destruction and annihilation. Like so, you can have a complete transformation. What's going to be uncomfortable for some people is the, the amount that you're pouring into your creativity, the things that give you joy. Some people are really going to feel like, wow, I have no control over manipulating their emotions anymore. It's going to make some people feel uncomfortable, but that's okay because it's also teaching them how to pour back into themselves as well. So change feels uncomfortable when you're talking about death rebirth, you know, it's a choice to stay on the death side and remain, keep pouring into people until you're just grieving and mourning. Woe is me. Why don't people see that? And then you start looking manipulative when there's nobody that can save you. So I definitely see you're planting new seeds. Somebody has at least eight gifts and talents. That's going to create at least eight streams of income. For you yep at least eight streams of income so somebody is grateful that the past is behind you six and two is eight and a soulmate coming across your, your path is going to help you to do that a soulmate could be a family member you know just a platonic situation where people are like did you ever try this did you ever try that they're trying to help you to awaken to your gifts where you don't feel strange weird spooky or crazy right it could be a parent, it could be a sibling, it could be whomever, it can be a cousin, but you're having a tower moment, right? So that tower moment is like, okay, I'm putting all my energy into pouring into me and what puts a smile on my face, right? Here we have the emperor card. Some energies that could have jumped to conclusions about you, you know, who could have been, um, their energy could have been selfish, attention seeking, um, um, energies that have outbursts of anger, lack of patience, very impulsive behavior, whoever they are, sources saying you're cutting ties with those types of energies, you know, um, because, you know, they could be using their fire for good, but instead they're too busy trying to manipulate your emotions 
and make you question your creativity, right? So you're springing forward away from those types of energies. And so source is saying to you, you're cutting ties with those types of energies and they're watching, right? But here you are on your throne, feeling incredibly smart again, very powerful, you know, when you cut ties with those types of energies and you're on your throne of your emotions as well. So you're pouring compassion into yourself, right? So those energies always think that people are, when they can't control you emotionally anymore, they think that you're being selfish. But that's what it is. If you're not a better human being, how can you be better for somebody else? If you don't feel like your cup is full, how can you give something to somebody else? You know what I'm saying? So at least eight streams of income for you and your person coming through. A lot of creativity is coming through for you and your person. It could be you and your spouse, you and a sibling, you and a whatever. But Source is saying, add some structure to your ideas. So when source brings people across your path and they are using their fire for good, meaning you feel motivated around them, you feel inspired, you feel uh, you feel willful, like you want to answer the phone when they call, you want to align yourself with them. Those are the energies that you want to stick close to. And so, like I said before, somebody is coming to the realization, I need to get away from energies that are impulsive. They have lack of uh, patience, you know, um, outbursts of anger. Or even them, those people who are still tied to those types of energies, you don't want to be connected to those energies because it didn't give you a chance to process your thoughts, right? As heartbreaking as it, it is for you, it is also equally heartbreaking as for them. But guess what? Source is saying, but that's part of the game. Two and three is five. Take the blindfolds off. When you're investing in energies that know how to manipulate other people's emotions and you take the blindfolds off, it's not as... It's not as um, it's not as disappointing, right? That's a learned behavior from their family. That's a learned behavior from their family. Like people say, well, oh, you don't get it. You don't put enough time in me. You don't invest enough in our relationship. You don't do X, Y, and Z. That's part of their programming, right? So you are detaching from their way of programming and you are reprogramming yourself. In other words, you're flushing their belief system out, if that makes sense to somebody, so that you can get back on your throne of your emotions. And yes, they're watching. Here we have the eight of swords because being around those types of energy dries up your, your, your creativity. See this water right here? You feel dried up. You feel like your creativity has dried up, right? And, um, and so... And you've already been heartbroken and deeply disappointed enough, right? People questioning your, this is would be like the 10 of swords, right? And so once you started to be away from them and you started to, you start talking about other things about like pouring back into what makes you happy, the more and more out of sight, out of mind, not looking at them on social media, being away from their energies. And remember, time is relative. The better you started feeling about yourself, the more you started letting those wounds heal, the more you start putting water on those wounds and you start saying, hmm, you know what? I need, to, as an adult, I need to pour more into me. And that's what got you back to your throne of power and intellect. So somebody definitely feels a lot more powerful now than you did before, right? So you feel a lot stronger, but if you were to go back around those types of energies, it would be so much clearer now from your throne because you've added some structure to your ideas. So you started out with a feminine plan. I mean, you started out with feminine energy, earth energy, right? And so Source is saying, you're going to start being very careful about who you invest your time slash money into. Once you see any little bit of manipulation, you know, from those energies about your gifts and talents, about what brings joy to your life, about your sexuality, sensuality, healthy range of emotions, any tinge of like sexual rigidity or sexual promiscuity or codependency or energies that's intentionally trying to make you sad and put all the attention on them, you out there. You, you turn off the waterfall. So you're like, nah, I need to bury this. I need to get away from this type of energy and I need to focus on me. Right? So, yeah. Two of Cups, again, source is just increasing your um your soul community. Two and six is eight, plus two is ten. Source is now putting you around some other creatives, you know, that, that's going to pour into you. So, yes, yeah, somebody is definitely glad that the past is behind them. Stay in the posture of gratitude. I'm so glad that the past is behind me. I don't have to worry about that anymore because it would have been a nightmare. If I went back, nine of swords, it would have been a complete and total nightmare. A nightmare. So I'm on my throne. If I go back, that would be a nightmare. That would be taking me from 10 of swords to nine of swords. You literally would be stepping back in a time machine of a nightmare 
for you to go back. So here we also have the five of pentacles. Yeah, so when we talk about the five of pentacles here, source is saying because you're no longer looking for their approval anymore as to how gifted and talented you are, whoever they are, family members, ex love interests, friends, or whomever you're pouring into yourself, you now recognize with where the emotional wounded wounding started, right? It could have been passed down of maybe your parents' family not um, not um, uh, nurturing their their emotions in a very healthy way. It could have been passed down. So somebody's learning how to pour into themselves, and you're going to feel very very fortunate that you have the support around you of people who are saying, you know, pour into yourself first so that you can become a better human being, and don't worry about what other people think. If you decide you want to go back to school at 50 years old, 60, 70 years old, pour back into you if that's going to make you feel better as a human being. And so that's what I feel like somebody is saying. I'm, I'm learning how to pour back into myself. I'm not waiting for everybody else to pour into me. I, if I want to make more money, then I need to take away time from some other stuff, right? That's the emotional wounding. Here we have the two, the six of um, wands. So I definitely see somebody back in the saddle again, moving forward. Three of wands, three and six, obviously is nine. Now that you're in the light about things, so you've left the wilderness situation. You're not going back. So you're not going back to the wilderness situation. Four of swords, somebody's finally getting their rest. Finally, finally, finally. It's two types of situations that source says to move on from. Two types of situations, right? Um... Is if anything, uh, you felt like it was it was a misfortune, right, to even come across their path. But really, it's not a misfortune. You're just in a very more, um, you're you're learning the light and dark side of all energy, right? So for some people, it's their way or the highway. They're they're arrogant. They're inflexible. They're lazy. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to break the generational cycles, chains, and curses on their side. They would rather tell you that like demonize where you came from, right? Um, they are dogmatic and prideful. They're domineering. They're jealous. They're very competitive in an unhealthy way. They're not saying, Hey, let's, let's, uh, they're, they're, they're fighting for the wrong cause. They're in human form, but they don't even realize they're in human form. Like I said, they feel like they can emotionally manipulate your, you know, cause emotional wounding and have you walking past your vault door until your knees buckle, but that's not going to happen. Source is sending your soul community your way and that's where you're going to find your person you're going to find your person in a very creative space and i see somebody settling down and getting married married in business and or in love that's what i'm saying for you all getting married in business and or in love so kudos um to you congratulations to you um and um you know, for just pouring back into yourself. Because when I look at this, the more air, the more you talk about how manipulative some energies were when it came to your emotions, whether it's in your family, love interests, past, whoever, business partners or whatever. Sources saying the more you're evaporating your creativity, it'll drive you crazy to wonder. But it's part of their programming, how their family programmed them, but it's also how your family programmed you. For them, it's the, their way of the highway, right? Maybe it's traditionally they believe certain things that you don't believe in, right? It's tradition, right? But you are breaking cycles, chains, and curses. You're actually going to feel fortunate that you came across their path to recognize how some people really believe everything revolves around them and how when you're, you're that time and space you're connected to them, you were actually, you neglected pouring into yourself. So somebody is really grateful that, hey, look, you know, I usually do this around this time of the year and I neglected myself. And so I got to stop doing that. You know, I got to pour into me. So because how can I pour into other people if I'm not pouring into myself first? Pouring into myself first. Ace of Pentacles, right? So that's, again, going back to motive. Motive is time. Keep pouring more time into me is not enough. You know, and um, I definitely see some major changes, you know, with that. So let's go ahead and close this out. Let's go ahead and close it out. So that was a leading card for you all and what you're going to be deciding that time is money and I'm going to pour more time into myself. I'm going to invest more in my gifts and talents because you have at least eight streams of income, which obviously is going to help better mankind. You pouring into you, into your education, into your knowledge.
planting seeds of discernment, wisdom, knowledge, all of that is going to create opportunities and jobs for other people. And it also puts you in a leadership position where people recognize, wow, they got structure to their ideas. They're not just blowtorching all over the place. They don't have to, they're not drained and stressed out by bullying types of energies around them. So here's a death card. So these two cards right here are ruled by this planet right here. So there's two types of energy. You're like, I'm so glad I came across their path. Um, and I'm so glad that I did not partner with those and I didn't stay connected to those types of energy because they would have been very health, unhealthy and very wounding. This card right here is Scorpio's card and their symbol is a scorpion, right? But we know the cousins of scorpions are mites and, and spiders, you know, things that kind of set webs or set traps for anything. It would have been you setting a trap for yourself, unfortunately, had you not, you feel like, okay, you know, the energy would have been like, you know, you trying to process your thoughts. They would have said, trying to catch you on a web of lies. They would have been saying, oh yeah, you lying. And I can tell you lying. You haven't even had a chance to process the first 10 conversations you all had before. They would have said, oh, you lying. I can tell something is up. Well, really they're projecting themselves onto you. So if you got eight streams of income and you're trying to hire people, because you could just see the nightmare ahead of time. If you got eight streams of income and you're thinking about legacy wealth and you're building in that and you're trying to break generational cycles, chains and curses, you're everywhere, every moment you not with them because the world has to revolve around them. They would have been questioning every little thing because guess what? They feel like they don't know what their purpose is yet. So you had to just go ahead and dead the situation and just add some structure to your ideas so you can move forward. So, yeah, you're definitely moving on from, you know, kind of sort of the past disappointment and past hurt. You're moving that out of the way of or possibly loved ones and just moving forward, right? And there's a Temptations card right here. We're not talking about the singing group. But that's what I'm saying for you all. Um, that's what I'm saying for you all, Capricorns. Let's go ahead and close this out. But, yeah, that's what I'm saying for you all. Mark your calendars, May 2nd, May 2nd, right? Like I said, originally it was going to go up on March 2nd, so I know March and May start with the same letter, but it's May 2nd, right? So 16, I am perceptive. So you have an inquisitive mind that allows you to uncover important truths. You have a special ability to read into other people's feelings. A wisdom seeker and your angels ask to share your knowledge for the benefit of others. So... Your gifts are definitely heightened, right? So this reduces to the number seven, one and six, the single digit seven, you know? And so somebody is not no longer asking why, why, why? And uh, like I said, you can get way in front of this because Mercury, I mean, excuse me, Pluto goes retrograde May 2nd, right? So right now, while we're in February, you can say, okay, I need to start pouring more in myself. That's how you speed it up because time is relative. So, but that's how you speed it up and say, I need to invest more in myself. I need to pour more into myself. Do I need to learn another language? Do I want, do I want to go take piano classes, music classes? Do I want to start taking art classes? I need to pour into me. So somebody apologizes for betraying you. Yeah, there's an energy that apologizes for betraying you. It could have been a, quite a few energies that betrayed you. So get locked in and laser focused right now. There's no, there should be no and ifs or buts. The videos are going up early. Plus you got, if you're on Patreon, you already saw the six month prediction. So it's just saying it's not as deep as you think, right? Because again, somebody let something sit so deep in your, your, your garden for so long, you started to just kind of sort of munch on that. Like, you know try to digest just their way of programming. So now it's time for you to dream bigger. Time for you to dream bigger. Healed people just move differently. Some people, like I said before, something is over. You're not carrying other people's, you know, burdens that they're still tethered to. The answers you seek are coming. So that's what I'm saying for you all, Capricorn. Let's get one last card and close it out. Let's get an Oracle card and let's close it out. But again, Yes, let's get mentally and emotionally prepared for, physically also prepared for Pluto going retrograde on May 2nd, right? So, success. So, I am attracting everything I need. That's love interest, that's working partnerships, family relationships, all of that. But there's definitely some purging already happening. Think of it this way, right? So, every time, um, every time... Every time uh, Scorpio, every time the moon moves through Scorpio, right? And every time it moves into Scorpio, you already getting a, a taste of, 
you're already getting a taste of Pluto retrograde, right? Every time it moves into um, Scorpio. And so it'll be... Um, it'll be leaving uh, Scorpio on March 2nd, right? It'll be leaving Scorpio on March 2nd. And that's another reason why I was saying March 2nd should have been May 2nd, because again, it's, it's moving out of Scorpio. The moon is moving through Scorpio into Sagittarius on May, I mean, excuse me, March 2nd. And that also continues to prepare you for uh, Pluto going retrograde on May 2nd, right? So anyway, success. I'm attracting everything I need, period. I am full of highly profitable ideas. I am grounded. I am connected to my highest calling. I am pushing the boundaries of the ordinary, which for me will always be for me. I am committed to my purpose. I am making necessary connections. I am connected to all that supports my highest good. So hopefully that added some, some clarity to anybody that heard March 2nd um, instead of May 2nd. I'm fully aware that Pluto goes retrograde on May 2nd, um, but it's going to be moving through Scorpio, um, going from the moon moving from Scorpio on May uh, March 2nd into Sagittarius. And so, but when it moves through Scorpio, that's when you have an opportunity. It's like you have... It's kind of like giving us a pretest of kind of like, what do you need to annihilate? What do you need to part ways with? You're going through a metamorphosis. You don't have to wait until Mercury, I mean, excuse me, Pluto goes retro, Pluto goes retrograde. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a video in the description that leads you to the second channel, the knowledge channel, and check that out so you can have some idea of what it means when Pluto goes retrograde. So just to kind of add more to your knowledge if that makes any sense. But like I said, it's not as deep as somebody thinks it is when we're talking about breaking cycles, chains, and curses. I feel like somebody may be looking at the whole pie, like all of the responsibility is on you. Your your parents have a, a generational cycle, chain, and curse. They're breaking. You do. Your siblings. Everybody has their own generational cycles, chains, and curses. But when you try to carry everybody else's burden, including your spouse, including your significant other, partner, whomever, your sisters and brothers, it can feel like the whole world is falling down around you. So Source is saying, get yourself mentally, physically, and emotionally prepared. It's really not as deep as you think. You know, um, it's just pouring into yourself, really pouring into yourself. And you are reconditioning and reprogramming people that I can't pour into you if my cup isn't full. Right. And you saying that from the 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 deepest parts of humility, like really just like I can't be a better human being for you. I can't be a spouse for you. I can't be the best friend I could be. I can't be the best business partner for my for you if I can't if I'm not if I don't feel like I'm I know how to pour into myself. Like I gotta learn how to pour into myself. So I definitely feel like somebody's gonna be increasing their water intake, juice fast, doing your detoxes, listening to water sounds listening to your favorite music, like doing things that just, you know, developing some kind of a, a discipline, even if it's getting up early and just pouring into yourself before the rest of the household wakes up. If you have a family, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying for you. Also get yourselves prepared because retrograde again is your time to slow down my time to slow down your family's time, friends, the whole world to slow down to kind of think, what do I need to, when it moves into, when the, the Pluto being in Aquarius is about that humanitarian, that's the primary focus. I can't be a better human being for the planet if I'm not being a better human being to myself. That's what it really boils down to. And I'll see you in the regularly scheduled videos. Okay. Bye.